Hi, a lot of you are so curious about how I invest my money, uh, the properties that I own, how much I'm making, the kind of job that I do, uh, even my net worth. So I will discuss some of that with you. I hope that you will learn something from it. I do not have a house or a real property here in America. I do have real properties in the Philippines. In fact, after even when I was growing up, the one thing that my parents were pounding in my head is the importance of investing in something um, whose value actually goes up. So they discouraged me from from purchasing a car before I purchased a house. So when I when I as soon as I started working, I started investing, sorry, saving up for a down payment for a house, and then I bought one. And that's now all paid out. So, but that also has a backstory. My parents grew up very, very poor, and they didn't have their own rooms. They had to move around a lot. And when I was growing up, when they got married, we actually lived in a, a small uh, section of my grandmother's property. So it was very small. I think it used to be like, I don't know, like a shed or something. It was like five, seven in height. That's that's how tall the ceiling is of the house. Um, it is a loft, but the the first the ground area, the ground floor is actually about five seven, and then it's a loft. We don't have a room. I didn't have my room, so we all slept in that loft. So, uh, but it was a happy childhood, and the, I was very close with with my cousins. So as soon as I started working, the first thing that I did was invest. Uh, sorry, save for a down payment, and then started, and then I found a house and started paying for that. So now it's all paid for. But the one thing I learned is that a, um, a house is actually not an investment because you're not actually earning anything from it. You're in, you're spending, in fact, to maintain the house. So I know that some of you will argue that, uh, sorry, so investment means you're getting something back in return, like a yield or a revenue. But because a house, you actually need to spend for it for taxes to maintain the house, you know, fix this, fix that, you know, stuff like that, buy a furniture you're not actually yielding any kind of income you're spending on it actually so i know some of you are going to say that uh, but the value of the property actually goes up but you need to check inflation versus the how much the property is going up if inflation is 10 percent and your property is going up three percent that's not a yield <laughs> you're actually losing but the one thing i know is um uh, I, one thing I also learned is that the benefit of having your own home outweighs the expenses that you're that you're putting in the house. One thing it did to me is give me the peace of mind and the security of knowing that no matter what happens, I can I can fail in my ventures, I can fail doing this and that. I know that at the end of the day, if I lose my job or whatever, I have a place to go home to that I call my own. Nobody can kick me out of that place. I can end up eating rice and, and salt, but I will be on my own. I know that I have a roof over my head. Um, that, that security allowed me to be more courageous in the things that I'm doing. I became a risk taker. Um, now, I, now I'm after that, now that, and now that I'm a bit more settled and established here, I started uh, investing in another property in the Philippines. So I'm still paying for it. And that is what I will start either to sell or to rent out. I will make a decision once it's turned over to me. So I'm still paying for it on a monthly basis. So a part of my money actually goes to that, that property that I'm paying for. Okay, another is stocks. I actually used to invest in cryptocurrency, but I early on when I started investing in cryptocurrency, I told myself my limit is 1500. Once I hit 1500, I will stop. And so I would allocate like $150 per, per paycheck. And then that's what I use. I, I, I used to invest. And then once I hit 1500, I stopped and shifted to stocks. So, and you, and this are recent developments of, okay, I just started doing all of this when I started working for, uh, for the investment company. Okay, so it's the same thing that I'm doing for stocks. I have an allocated amount on per paycheck and I put that into stocks. I just buy the stocks that I like. Now, what are the stocks that I hold? Uh, the biggest, the biggest chunk actually goes into Apple. So that's the biggest stock in my portfolio, Apple. And then I have um, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble. I'm pretty well diverse. I try to be as diversified as I can. So uh, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, um, I think I have Microsoft, 
uh, not I think, I am sure I have Microsoft, um, Toyota, I have Lucid, L-C-I-D, because that's the competitor of Tesla. I thought at some point somebody has to compete with Tesla. <laughs> so I have Lucid. I have Lumen. Lumen actually gives out 9% dividend. Uh, dividend is the, it's sort of an income. So outside of the value of your stocks going up, they actually also give you back uh, a certain percentage per annum. So theirs is about 9%. But what I do is I don't liquidate the dividend. I just uh, spend it, uh, sorry, invest it back into the stock. Apple actually also has dividend. Coca-Cola has dividend. So, and then I have small ones, you know, some negligible ones that if it goes up, then if it hits like five dollars i'm a millionaire if it doesn't then that's fine it's negligible but the chunk of the investments that i make actually goes into apple procter and gamble uh, the ones that i that i previously mentioned okay um and then i have retirement accounts so the one advantage of living here is a better not the best but it's a better retirement um it, uh, they allow you to invest for your retirement so we have there are two types either 401k or ira 401k is sponsored by the company and this is the first company that, that i've worked for in the us that actually offers 401k so the the company has a choice to actually also match a percentage of of your of your so they take a percentage of your income and they invest it um, some is actually 3% is the biggest that they would go. Some would actually do 1% depending on the health of the company. Outside of that, um, and so the limit is, I think, 19500 uh, annually. So, and then the other one is IRA, Individual Retirement Account, which is not sponsored by a company. You just do it on your own. When I, the very first employer that I had here, where, well, second employer technically, that I that I worked for here in the U.S. actually advised me to open one. He, to the point where he was nagging me to open an individual retirement, retirement account. And he said, eventually, someday you're going to thank me. But on a daily basis, he would like open an IRA, open an IRA. And so I did it just to shut him up so that the next time he asks me, I can say, I've done it, shut up. <laughs> but he's actually right. Um, I did the minimum, just as I've said, to just shut him up. But then I eventually realized after years, so I start, what they do is automatically take money out of your bank account and then they put it in whatever it is that they choose to invest in. So you have a fan, fund manager, so you don't actually have control over that. So, but then after, it, so it just went, it continued taking the money out of my bank account, but I never actually thought of checking it. And then I finally decided when I started working for this investment company, I decided, might as well check it and i looked at it because i've been investing on it for like six years or five years and but i was just putting in the minimum and i just realized how much it grew and now i do regret not putting more. <laughs> i should have i should have actually maximized it um but you know it is what it is um next is a business i actually started a business with my niece where i buy goods here and we just started this so i'm buying goods here and then i'm selling it there so i allocate a certain amount of my paycheck to buy stuff that i think it will be sellable in the philippines so usually stuff that is that aren't available in the philippines and then there are some people who actually request that i send that i just buy something for them so i that's specific so it's a they'll send me money i'll buy it and I'll, and i i send it back home um so they either pick it up from there we have different pickup locations or they have it shipped to them so okay so that's one but we just started it as of now the, we don't know how good it's going to be if it's going to be profitable or even if it is going to be worth it even if it is profitable so i'll let you know <laughs> okay so but i don't think i was quote unquote lose money in it because I, I in my head if things don't sell i can always just give it away as a gift because i do that anyway i do buy stuff here and then send it back home to give it as a gift for birthdays and christmas so that's still an expense that i can just you know you know what i mean okay so all right um i do have another business here but i'm not putting in money there anymore because we have 
sources of income that sort of runs the company. On your screen right now will be the actual allocation of um, my investment. So there's real estate 29.4. 401k is 20.6, IRA is 5.9. And then the new business that I talked about is 11.8. And then stocks is 17.6%. And then cash, I do invest, I save some cash, but this is very, very minimal. Just so I have something in case I need it. Um, it's it. I don't usually like keeping cash because it devalues. The inflation right now is 9.6 in America, so it means that the money, the hundred dollars that I have right now, just lost 9.6 percent of its purchasing power. That's what it meant. So it's now worth 90.4 if my math is right. So um, imagine that, right? Like I work so hard for this hundred dollars and now it's now 90.90.4 percent 90.4 dollars that's the value of it compared to a year ago so i that i it's not practical to keep cash so i just keep i just save some just for emergency okay um what are the jobs so now that you know where how i invest what are the jobs that i do i have a full-time job as i've mentioned before i'm a, a marketing manager for an investment company and i love doing that job i remember uh, this popular saying and the name who said it actually skips my mind right now but i'll remember in a bit but he said find a job that you love doing and that you enjoy doing and you'll never have to work a day in your life and i finally found it here because i enjoy doing what i do a lot of people ask me like a lot of people ask me like why do you keep on working after working hours because i enjoy doing it <laughs> that's the bottom line i enjoy doing it so i'm not counting my hours it doesn't feel like work to me so this is something that i do not mind doing at all for the rest of my life i really really love it but i do have side gigs um, and those side gigs could actually equal if not go over and above what I'm regularly earning but it's not regular it's not like a fixed income there are months where there's none and there are months where I have a lot and then there are months where the the work is a lot and there are months where it's just slow so um, but I do need those side gigs in order to maintain what it is that I need to invest in and stuff like that okay so and as i've said it's um the business that we have the business here isn't really profitable yet because we're we just started <laughs> like this year so it's earning enough to run itself and to grow by itself but it's not enough yet for us to have a regular income from it and then the youtube uh income which is very very negligible but it goes back into that business that i have so in just the main two things that are earning me money that I can spend and invest um, are the job, the regular job, and the, the side gigs. Any dividend, any increase in value that I get from stocks and cryptocurrencies, I don't liquidate. I just keep it there. I'm a long-term investor, so it's just there. And then comes when I do want to buy a property here. So maybe when I find one and I have enough for a down payment, maybe I'll liquidate some to help me out. Um, but as of now, it's just there. Why would I invest now when the market is down, the cryptocurrency is down, um, stock, smart, stock market is down, and, but actually that's the best time to invest <laughs> when it's down. But the thing is that you do need to eat it up for, for as long as it, <laughs> as it requires for the market to recover. So you need to eat up the losses before it goes it becomes better because it's going to take some time. I think the U.S. market is headed towards recession. So I do think stock market is going to go down further, but then, um, but it eventually it's going to recover. So I, my principle is to invest only when I, what I can afford to lose. So whatever it is that I allotted for stocks, I can afford to lose that. Um, it's, uh, it's, that's why I'm, it's not like, thousands and thousands of dollars i literally computed what is it that will that i can lose and not feel bad over it and that would be the amount that i'm investing in right now um okay so i hope that helps the goal is um in five to seven years i want to be able to slow down as i've said i don't mind doing the kind of work that i'm doing right now i don't mind doing it longer because i enjoy doing it i love the people that i work with um, I'm learning so much and I always enjoy learning. So, but eventually still, I want to just be able to give up the side gigs. 
um, pursue the projects that I want, write more, illustrate more. Um, I have a bigger goal of bringing and helping Asian artists uh, to come here in, in the U.S. Not just artists like singers and actors, but other artists. I'd like to provide a platform or a way for uh, yeah, for the, the Asian talents to actually come here in the U.S. and have an easier time navigating the market. So that's the bigger goal. But as of now, I'm still investing in a lot of things. So a chunk of my time is actually spent working, side gigs, looking at my investments and stuff like that. Um, the other goal is to be able to have enough money for a very, very comfortable retirement. And um, I'm still several decades away from that. But I do have a set goal in mind. Uh, I have a minimum in mind and I hope that'll be... I'm still very, very far from that minimum. But, um, but uh, you know, I, I, I believe in my strategy and I know that I can get to it. So um, that's it, actually. I hope that helps. Um, and if you want any tips, if you have questions and clarifications, uh, let me know.